Another system is learning to eat right. I'll give you an example. So if you eat right, you're going to be healthier. It's easier to exercise. You won't feel so bad going to the gym if your weight looks good. You know, you won't be self-conscious. So there's this whole um, ripple effect of goodness that you get from just eating right. You know, it helps your social life. You'll get more promotions if you, you know, unfortunately, people's appearance does affect everything. You know, how they're treated in the workplace, whether you buy from them, everything. So a system to get your eating right, I recommend, is to take a lifetime approach instead of going on a diet. Take a lifetime approach in which you're simply trying to learn as much as you can about which foods are good for you. And, and then on top of that, how to prepare those foods. So it's one thing to say, okay, a, uh, a sweet potato is better than a, re- a russet potato. So, okay, I learned something, but now I don't want to eat the sweet potato. So it didn't help me. So I got I to learn the extra thing, which is, all right, how would I prepare this so I wouldn't want to eat it? In my case, I like putting soy sauce and pepper on it, and it's delicious. Now, it took a lot of experimenting to, to build a system in which uh, over time, little by little, I've learned how to make foods that normally would not taste great taste amazing. I'll, I'll give you like a really clean example. If I said, here's some cauliflower. Hey, eat, eat this cauliflower. And you'd be like, oh, you know, I could boil it, it'd be all right. You know, maybe if I put some soy sauce on it, it wouldn't be too bad. But try this trick. Take a cauliflower, just a raw cauliflower, and slice it thin so that you've got like a little, almost like a chip of a cauliflower. And then uh, salt it and pepper it, and then rub it into the salt and pepper on like your little board, and then eat it. And it takes this stupid little piece of cauliflower, and it's only the fact that you flattened it so that the salt and pepper would really just stick to it well instead of just falling off. And if you tried to salt a piece of cauliflower regularly, the salt would just fall off. And you eat this thing and you think to yourself, this is the most delicious thing. And it's only because you learned it. Now, I'm not going to say that it would be delicious to you. The whole point of a system is that you're learning how you personally can enjoy the food that is also coincidentally the best for you. And you can tell the difference. I'll give you another example. Let's say you went into the salad bar and you were trying to stay, you were trying to watch your weight and there, it's a bad salad bar because of the, uh, the crisis and it has, only has two items. There's plain pasta and a plain white potato. Which one do you choose if you're trying to watch your weight go? Which, which uh, one would you choose? Plain pasta or what's that, what was the other one? Or, or just a plain white potato. Uh, white potato maybe? I think so. All right, so the answer is pasta, hmm. and although bo- both of them are uh, simple carbs, you would expect that both of them would be kind of bad for you in the sense that all simple carbs are going to you know, boost your glycemic index, etc. But for reasons that we don't exactly know, pasta doesn't boost you as much, uh, your, your sugar, your glycemic index as much as a potato does. So they're actually not even close. So that was just one little piece of knowledge that I gave you. And suppose there would be situations where you said, well, I don't really have a preference taste-wise. I like potatoes. I like pasta. Now you have the choice. Mm. So having simply a system where you learn how to compare foods and which ones are better than others and then also how to prepare them allows you to effortlessly have the right foods, effortlessly choose things which will maintain your weight, and you won't even be aware of it. Because what you want to do is get rid of your uh, any sense of willpower or like working to control your weight. You just turn it into knowledge instead of willpower. Willpower doesn't work. There's a reason that people fail at diets. If you're using your willpower, you're eventually it's going to exhaust. And you're just going to say, ah, i got to have the french fries and the cake. But if you build it into a system where every day the only thing you're doing is eating, you're just eating. Mm. So I'll go downstairs and the only things I have to eat in the house – are all the things which I've experimented with that couldn't make me fat no matter how much I ate of them. Like I could, I could eat everything in my kitchen all day long and like I get a little distended, but then I'd, you know, use the restroom and I'd, I'd be back to my normal weight. <laughs> Cause you know, if you eat right, you almost can't get fat. Now this also assumes that you have an exercise system. So for the exercise system, uh, I tell people that the, the goal, well, I won't use the word goal, but what you want to do, is uh, have a lifetime system as opposed to I'm going to go to the gym at 2 o'clock today. 
So that would be more of a goal. I'm going to go to the gym. So here's, here's just some of the things you would learn. One of the things is uh, I would always reward myself immediately after exercising. So I'd go to the snack bar at my gym and I'd get a you know delicious smoothie and I'd sit down and have some downtime just playing with Twitter and my phone, which I really, really enjoy if I've already worked out. Now, because it was such a good little treat that I would give myself, it, it, people are not that unlike dogs. If you give a dog a treat to do a trick, eventually it's just going to do that trick automatically and it's not even going to be thinking about it. You don't even need the treat after a while. So you want to train yourself that your exercise routine is not even part of the willpower stack anymore. It's just something you do because you get a reward. You do it because you want to. And then I also tell people to experiment continuously on how to exercise best. Because if you went to the gym and you did something you didn't like, you're not going to do that very often. So the whole trick is to do things that are easy enough that you're willing to go back tomorrow. So mm -hmm. if, if, if you're not active every day, it doesn't have to be the gym, but you should you know, at least take a walk or you know, clean the garage or something. Just be active every day. Uh, and over time, you will just boredom alone will cause you to learn new tricks. You'll be talking to somebody and they'll say, hey, I, I'm playing squash. You ever play squash? And you'll be like, no, I never thought about it. How's squash? And then you try squash. Maybe that works for you. Maybe it doesn't. But you would A-B test every day, all the time, until you found a set of things which will make you exercise every day and look forward to it. Mm -hmm. If you can't get to look forward to it, you, then you do not have a system. You have a goal. The goal, I got to exercise even though it hurts. Good luck with that. Here, here's my system. I love exercising. Like today, I'm, I'm going to go for a nice walk because it's what I do during the, you know, the pandemic is keep my, keep my immune system healthy. So I immediately modified my exercise so I never work myself to exhaustion because that would make me a little immune compromised for a little while. I don't want any of that. So I'm going to take this nice walk outdoors, and I'm not going to walk so hard that it hurts. It's just going to be a nice slightly challenging, work up a little bit of a sweat, listen to my phone while I'm walking, my favorite show, I wait till my favorite show is on, and I have that recorded, and I'm listening to my phone, and I'm, I'm just having a great time. Yeah. So, so am I going to get my exercise this week? Absolutely. And it's not because I have willpower. It's because I finally, after years, I've got a system that I know makes me happy, so I'm, I'm glad to go exercise, and I'm glad to go eat. So I've, I've transformed willpower into just something I do every day that I like. Scott, is this so your way of telling us that you're going to be a health coach in your next chapter in your life? <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I, I don't tell everybody this, but a big part of that book, even though it's only a, I don't know, a chapter or two yeah. on the eating and diet, it's mostly about other things, about your life in general. But it was sort of a Trojan horse because I wanted to tell this message about how to have a system for those things. But I knew that because I'm not a doctor, you know, I have no credentials in any field that's relevant, sure. that that was a hard sell. So I literally buried the most important part uh, way back in the chapters in the book. And the, and the early chapters are also, they're designed to be super helpful, you know, the talent stack idea, et cetera. But um, I literally am pacing the reader to get them to uh, uh, believe my story enough by the time they get to those chapters that it overcomes the fact that I don't have any professional credentials. And I try to only write about things that you can obviously check on your own. Yeah. Like I'm not going to make a scientific claim unless I show a source. But if I say to you, for example, um, and this is one of my tricks, so, excuse me, I've got allergies today. Uh, one of my techniques I write about I learned this from um, my hypnosis coach. Uh, I, I learned hypnosis years ago. Right. Yeah. And he taught me that if you don't want to go to the gym and work out, um, put on your workout clothes and give yourself permission to not go to the gym. So you, if you say, I got to go to the gym and you don't feel like it, you just can't do it because you, you just don't feel like that big of an investment. You're just tired. But you might be able to put on your sneakers you might be able to put on your shorts because, you know, it's warm anyway. So I'll put on my shorts. And you just walk around a little bit. And what the hypnotist knows, uh, and I'm teaching you now, is that your body is a, is a two-way street. You know, you, you have thoughts and they cause you to dress a certain way. But dressing a certain way will actually uh, influence your thoughts. 
So if you can get yourself to put on the workout clothes, the clothes themselves become the tool that rewires your brain. And you just walk around and you've got your, your workout shoes on and you think to yourself, you know, I could at least take a walk or I could at least go to the gym and then I can at least, you know, keep my habit going. It's good to have a habit. One of the things I do uh, as part of my habit when I can go to the gym, you know, obviously I can now. But when I can, um, there'll be days when I really, really don't feel like exercising, but I can go to the gym. And I'm depending on the gym to give me the energy when I get there. So I put myself together. I drive to the gym. I park. I walk across this long parking lot. I walk into the lobby of the gym. There's a big rock wall they have in the middle of the gym. And I'll stand in front of the rock wall, and I'll look around, and I'll say, nope. And I'll literally, I'll just turn around, and I'll walk right out the door get my car and drive home. Now about mm -hmm. three to four times a year, I'll do that. They never, it's never planned. It's just, well, it's not here, but I call that a success every time. And it is because I don't have a goal of going to the gym. If I did, it would be a failure. Right. What I have is a system that causes me to do things that even willpower couldn't get me to do. So if my system got me all the way to the lobby of the club, you know, my gym, I don't care that it didn't work that time because it's not about that. It's about all year Long and all year is looking good. <clears throat> and if I, if I went through that much trouble, even when I didn't want to work out, uh, I got a strong system. So all the days that I don't have a problem with working out, I'm going to get to the gym. And, and indeed I do. So I always take that as a positive. It's like, wow, mm. I really didn't want to work out today, but I got all the way to the gym. That's a good system. Yeah, that's really useful. I just caught up with a friend of mine a couple of days ago who was, T telling me that he, because of this Corona thing and the fact that he loves going into the office normally and having conversations with real people and dressing up, he literally does the exact same thing that he would if he was to go into the office. He, he works at a bank, so he, he puts his suit on, he shaves, he does his hair, puts on deodorant, like does the exact thing from the beginning to all the way to the end and then takes off the clothing, even though he's just walking across the room to go into his, you know, into his office. And I was like, at first I was like, I thought that was crazy, but hearing the things that you're talking about, that it's actually, uh, you're, you're kind of like tricking your own mind to think that you're at a certain place or a certain mindset. And it's to me, yeah, it's pretty smart. Uh, I mean, I'm still wearing sweatpants right now underneath, but <laughs> that, that, yeah, you, your example is kind of perfect. Uh, here's another one. I can't work at home with shoes on. I don't know if you've if found that correlation. Mm, interesting. It, interesting. It, I need shoes, so I have to take on. my shoes off. <laughs> uh, bad example. Yeah. yeah. So um, for, for some reason, I have such a strong association with if my shoes are on, I've got to be walking somewhere. Okay. I, got to, I got to be doing something that I can't wear shoes if I'm going to be doing any kind of creative work. Now, the other thing I can't do is I can't take my feet off the ground if I'm working. Because as soon as my feet go up to relax or I cross my legs and put them on the couch or something, I'm in relaxation uh, mode. Mm. And then I can't concentrate. You, you should see, and I don't even cross my legs usually. You have to have them open and flat on the ground. And that's your, that's your working position. And then if you keep that as your working position, then even the days you don't feel like working, the position will, will trigger you. It's, it's another trick. Interesting. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. And is that, is that personal? Like I, cause I, I, I'm, I'm so into this stuff. Like one of the things I use to drink more water it, to trick myself is just to drink. I'm drinking a smoothie right now. I don't know if you guys can see, but I just use a bigger jug than one of these smaller things that most people use because you just, your, your mind, you just keep drinking water and you're like, wow, I didn't really drink that much, but compared to what you would <laughs> normally be drinking, it's a lot. Uh, going back to the cauliflower example, one of the things I've done because you know I've grown up eating rice, there's this new trend now where people take cauliflower and they transform it into, and they kind of replace it with rice, brown rice or white rice, and they use that in like poke bowls or they use that in you know other other things basically that makes it feel like it's rice. For a lot right. of Asians, that's that's like a huge thing because we just we can't live without rice, you know. Um, yeah. So yeah, there's there's a lot of different examples. I can't live without rice either. I think I, I might be Asian because I can't, I can't go a day with it. I can't <laughs> go a day with a different rice. life. Yeah. Yeah. It's my, my favorite thing. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, there, there's also a similarity with uh, sleep systems. So one of the, uh, if you've ever read on the, the science of what's the best technique for getting to sleep, which is a real big deal right now because people have a lot of stress, um, one of the biggest, probably the number one tip, there might be some others that are important, is that you shouldn't use your bed for anything but sleeping and you know intimate behavior. Because Sex. then your bed becomes, <laughs> then your bed becomes associated with those things, yeah. And uh, and maybe maybe those things shouldn't happen in the bed either. I think, but some <laughs> things just have to. Uh, and uh, but if you go to bed and that's where you start reading, or bed is where you watch TV and you're watching exciting things on TV, then you start thinking, oh, bed is where I got to wake up and my mind gets active. Uh, oh, so that's so number that, one that. tip: is don't use your don't use your bed for anything but sleeping and, and the fun stuff. 